I want you to watch the next 30 seconds very carefully. In just a few minutes, a second rider is going to come down this track through the same twists and turns, over the same humps and bumps, but with one big difference. This rider is blind. So how is that possible when practically all he sees around him is black? To find out, we need to start with a creature that spends the majority of its life in permanent darkness. A creature that can navigate its way around these caves and caverns without using a head torch. In fact, without using its eyes at all. I'm talking about bats, of course because we all know that bats can get around in the dark. But bat expert Dr. Dean Waters is about to show me that their senses are far cleverer than that. Have you got one? I've got one here. This is uh, an Egyptian fruit bat. Hello, Close Egyptian up. fruit bat. I mean, they're very sweet-looking creatures, and because some bats, horseshoes and such, are, look like... Uh, they're a bit horror. weird. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no offence. I'm sure they look lovely to one another, yeah. but this, to us, is aesthetically... Quite a handsome little thing. Beautiful. So, beautiful big eyes. They also have these, these lovely ears. They're very, very mobile. They, they wiggle them around a lot. And they echolocate through their mouth. They, they'll open their mouth and click from side to side with their tongue. So, well, that's it. That's it. Yeah, very, so very it's not simple. It's like a special mechanism, it's just a tongue just a click. That's it. But that simple clicking is enough for the fruit bat to find its way about with amazing precision and Dean believes it can build up an incredibly detailed picture of its surroundings. But just how accurate is it? Time to put the bat super sense to the test. We're using a very high-tech combination of cup hooks, bells and string to make a type of bat slalom course. OK, then, Dean. Lights out. Let's see what we got. we got a dark cave, thin strings and bats. Yep. What are we hoping for? Well, we're looking at how good these bats' echolocation calls are. It's always been described as a, as a simple or primitive system. Sounds rubbish. Yeah, really. I mean, it doesn't sound very impressive. No, but if you look very carefully at the call structure, it's almost exactly the same type of calls that dolphins use. And we know that dolphins are very, very good echolocators. So what we're hoping for, then, is they dodge the strings and we'll know if they hit them because of the bells. Yep, absolutely. See? Right. But we really haven't made it easy for them. The strings are less than a centimetre wide and the gaps between them are much narrower than the bat's two-foot wingspan. Yeah, unfortunately, our experiment has one fatal flaw. We can't actually see if it's working. We don't hear any bells, but the bats might have all flown off for all we know. So, we have a little rethink set up a special night vision camera and turn on an infrared light. The bats will still be in pitch black, but now we should be able to see them via Dean's laptop. Success! 
except the cave appears to be completely empty. But then a single bat appears. And what he does next is remarkable. Nearly gone, are you gonna go through? Oh, that's perfect. perfect. No, that's absolutely perfect. So that was, it was bringing his wings and he knew that we either side exactly where they were. Right, so again, here comes one now. So this supposedly primitive system is capable of picking up even the slightest of obstacles so accurately that the bats don't even bother pulling their wing in till the last possible moment. They make it look easy, but it's not. There's an awful lot going on to enable that little bat to fly around in the pitch dark. It is a wonderfully sophisticated little animal. And the thought was always that these guys, their echolocation system was a bit primitive, a bit basic compared with the other smaller yeah, types absolutely. of bat. Yeah. But what this proves, in fact, is that it's not at all. It's, I mean, it's, it's quite finesse. It'll go down to this wide. Well, absolutely. I mean, these guys know exactly where these wires are, and that's purely through their echolocation system. Because it's pitch black in here. There's no other way they'd know they're there. So if a bat can use sound, a series of small clicks to see in the dark. Maybe it could work for human beings. This man, Professor Brian Hoyle, believes he's found a way to do just that by putting bat tech in a stick. So this isn't just a bit like the way a bat works. This is echolocated. It's very, very similar indeed. Okay. Over to you. Right, so... It was, it's beeping at me. That was you. It was me. It's found yes, you. you felt me. Look at that. Yes, and if here. I move it yeah. off, it stops. I'm going to go behind you so I can yeah, see what's I, going I on. I felt you walk through. So what I'm doing now is this is sending out a noise, the same as a bat does, and then listening for it bouncing back, echoing back off objects, which is exactly what our bats did. It then tells me by buzzing Absolutely. On this, and you can Absolutely. feel it in my thumb. So if I walk towards that, oh, ah, it's okay. found something. Just take it slowly. It's buzzing through my thumb. Ah, good. But if I move off, yep. it's not. Great. So it's telling me there's an object so to my left. So you've found a safe path to the right. And there's nothing to my right. Yep. Nothing, nothing. Oh, there's a sudden buzz at my thumb. Now, if I move off to the right, nothing. To the left, something. To the right, nothing. So I, I would know I'm OK going this way. And it gets faster as you get closer to it. It buzzes through your thumb more quickly. That's great, absolutely. Well, you don't need me to tell you, Brian, that your invention works, because it, it, it does. Fantastic, <laughs> great. Bring on the blindfold. Let's give this a proper go. Right, let's see if I can pick up in a matter of minutes what it's taken the fruit bat millions of years to perfect. Nothing. Oh, uh, something to my right. Hang on, there's a gap there. I've got something to my left there and to my right there. Picked up something then. Oh, ah, it's the <laughs> that's a mannequin, isn't it? Slowly but surely, I can see how somebody could build up a picture. Right, only thing is, I've no idea where I've ended up. Right, I had no idea that I was here. Well, I think you did really well, and I don't think you bumped into anything. I didn't hit anything. Surprisingly, that's not down to luck, but to my brain. And what you're doing, then, is this information goes into your brain... Yes. ..and it's processed through the same part of your brain that yes. actually processes sight. It, it is. Which means when we talk about using this to see, as far as your brain's concerned, you really are. You're building up the picture yeah, in the same it, place. It, it, you're seeing. I, if we think it's the brain that sees, not the eyes, yeah. then you're seeing. Right. Yeah. And that's the remarkable thing. Our brains can adjust astoundingly quickly to using our senses in a completely different way. So I thought 
What if we take this whole idea a step further and use bat sonar to enable blind people to do something they wouldn't normally even attempt? So I've taken apart a couple of canes and I've come up with this, the bat bike. Now, let me talk you through this. Essentially, it's, it was a prototype at the moment, but it shows the principles. We've got two bat cane handles up here on the bars with the contact pads feeding back information to the rider from. The sensors in the handles themselves, and we've got two more down here. I reckon that should be enough information feeding back to the rider to enable a blind person to ride a mountain bike down a mountain bike course. Now, I'll say it out loud, yeah, that is quite a big ask, but, but it, is, it could work. By the time engineers have built our bat bike properly, a few of the details have changed, but the theory remains the same. These sensors send out and receive a series of clicks and a couple of vibrating buttons tell the rider what's up ahead. But now it's actually come to it, I'm not sure who's more nervous, me or 21-year-old Dan Smith, who actually has to ride this thing. A keen cyclist, Dan tragically lost his sight nine months ago from a rare genetic condition. He hasn't been able to ride a bike on his own since. Although most of the damage to his eyes is invisible, trust me, Dan can't see anything in front of him. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Dan only had a few short hours to practice on this bike. But bat technology is allowing his brain to see the course. Well, there can be no clearer proof that bat tech works. Yeah, very good, actually. So, very good to be back on a single bike again, um, but the technology works because I've just navigated the whole track by myself, so I'm very pleased, yeah. Now, obviously, it might be a little while before visually impaired cyclists take to our roads, but bat technology may just have opened up their lives like never before.